During this video, you will learn what landscape management and protection is, the different types of landscape management, why it is important, the benefits, and an overview of a different perspective. It is critical for the future of landscapes that we conserve biodiversity in order to satisfy humanity's needs. Modern lives put numerous strains on our landscapes, threatening their integrity and capacity to support human society. We must discover ways to support and encourage sustainability. Landscape management is the maintenance of land to guarantee that landscapes can meet current and future communities of users' requirements and ambitions in an effective and sustainable way. Because of the extended time periods necessary to build landscapes capable of supporting a range of plants and animals and to allow planted vegetation to develop, protecting existing landscapes and mature vegetation is important. Where feasible, mature plants and existing ecosystems should be preserved. Some of the different types of management practices are going into each one is outside the scope of this video, so we will focus on these three. National parks. For example, Australia's six Commonwealth national parks, the Australian National Botanic Gardens, and Australian Marine Parks. Conservation zones. For example, the 23 conservation management zones of Australia are geographic areas classified according to their ecological and threat characteristics. World Heritage Listing. For example, a World Heritage Site is a landmark or area with legal protection by an international convention administered by UNESCO. Landscapes are diverse and play an important part in our lives all around the world. Land use changes in the past have had a substantial impact on the quantity and distribution of biota on landscapes. Changing landscape patterns and processes linked to global climate change are currently one of the primary drivers influencing ecosystem services across the world. Human activities are transforming land at a faster and greater scale than at any other time in history. Nature offers a vast range of life-sustaining services and benefits on which we all rely as individuals and as a community. We will go into greater detail for all of these benefits. Trees are called the Earth's lungs. Not only do they provide oxygen for us to breathe, but they clean the air of many pollutants harmful to humans. Open space has an overall positive effect in the improvement of urban ventilation. By protecting open space and creating parks, trees and other vegetation are also preserved and protected, often planted. This vegetation plays a significant role in improving air quality in the region. There is a rising interest in limiting our greenhouse gas emissions and becoming more energy efficient, both regionally and globally, in order to deal with climate change. Natural lands like forests, grasslands, and parks are key assets in this effort, whether they are large preserves serving as carbon sinks or small local neighborhood parks helping cool their environs. Preserving open lands and creating parkland preserves natural processes of infiltration and limits imperviousness, both of which are intimately linked to storm water management and water quality. As land is preserved throughout the region, a key environmental benefit is the protection of unique habitat and regional biodiversity. Wildlife and vegetation depend on undisturbed natural areas for food, shelter and reproduction, often in ways that humans have not always recognized. However, we are beginning to learn about the interconnectedness of the ecosystems of which we are a part and how it is beneficial for us to protect and preserve habitat and biodiversity within the region. A less definable environmental benefit of preserving parks and open lands is the idea that having access to parks and natural lands reminds people to act more environmentally responsible. Land preservation can change behavior, the usage, and management of land by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples differs from that of non-Indigenous peoples. Landscapes and culture are inextricably linked. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples manage the landscape through restricting land access based on the season, the presence of holy places, and the use of management methods such as cold burning. During this video, you have learned what landscape management and protection is, the different types of landscape management, why it is important, the benefits, and an overview of a different perspective.